have you guys read about the new deadliest internet game that that kids are playing Mm-mm. uh on in no. the game splatoon 3 oh boy oh what a small controversy happened this uh, last couple of weeks where japanese streamers and vtubers mm-hmm. were uh dueling each other with the hashtag splatoon porn video okay where they were setting their own their opponents paint colors or their own paint colors to an alpha channel so that if whatever as much as color was painted <laughs> that would display a porn video <laughs> and you and you were basically challenged to keep that as much of that paint off the screen as possible or That's your great. stream would get banned that's so good. Wow. Yeah, right? That seems like real stakes. That's sick, actually. Was it just any porn video, or could you, like, choose the the, the means of your demise? So that's how we know you're a pervert, is that's your first question. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Anthony. I'm, 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 I'm glad we get to meet. <laughs> From zero to 60, I very quickly understand who you are as a person right off the bat. I think it's good to know. I, I, I gotta assume you're picking your poison. How you, uh, you pick your weapons. How you, you, do how you go down, yeah. So it's sort of one of those whoever loses we win kind of scenarios. The opposite yeah. of an alien versus predator. <laughs> exactly that. <laughs> I just think it's a real rad thing because, like, as we all know, your internet persona is your entire livelihood. Mm-hmm. So to lose that is you might as well be dead. I mean, it seems rather freeing to just be like, well, I guess I'm done. <laughs> it's all in the garbage now. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> to be free, no more. I'm gonna go be an accountant and like go outside on the weekends or whatever and live my life. I mean, if you couldn't protect yourself with your gameplay skills, I think you kind of deserve to go down get, get good <laughs> get damn good. <laughs> okay i i bet there's probably also like i feel like there was a secret skill that was developed in this where you seed territory to your opponent mm-hmm. right you let you mm-hmm. let them spray the squid kids spray some okay some some paint oh they'll well, spray all right they're spraying they're <laughs> spraying <laughs> real hard spraying's happening dropping, all night long dropping yeah. loads all over the map mm-hmm. and then but then you're like you know what i'm pretty sure based on how cinematography works there'll be no butthole here and you give that part of the territory up based on your own camera. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're playing like a, you're a 3D game. Hold on. You're saying Twitch has a butthole algorithm. Is it kind of like, remember the bubbles, the circles, when people would do the porn where the they bubbling. would- Bubbling. The bubbling, yeah. Bubbling, the bubbling. that was a weird fad. Was, what? Are you yeah. saying it's kind of like bubbling? <laughs> yeah, all right. Who wants to explain bubbling to Kevin? Hi. Kevin, you know bubbling. <laughs> do I? Sort of the opposite of, bu- of explanation. I guess I guess you're right. It is kind of the opposite of bubbling. <laughs> bubbling is so it's a thing. the 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 way that it was explained to me was that uh, a Mormon on Reddit <laughs> was like, "I don't want to look at porn because that's not okay with my religion." Sure. So I found a loophole that God can't get angry at me for, which is if I just take fo- pictures of clothed women or women that are just mm-hmm. in bikinis or things that are you know PG thirteen or PG friendly, yeah. but I create a bunch of I black out the entire thing, but I make bubbles of of transparency over where there is skin and flesh. It tricks your brain into thinking that anywhere there's not a bubble, that there is actual nudity. And it fucking works. If you look up bubble yeah. pictures right now, you'll be like, oh my God, that's a nude woman. It's pretty hot. <laughs> it, 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 it was wild how much it worked. And uh, seemingly, much like soaking, was just fucking hot new Mormon tech for, for getting around <laughs> God's disapproval. Well, also the same way that we all got into bubbling, everyone got into soaking. It yeah. swept the country. <laughs> yeah, it's millennial bubbling. I mean, it just, it shows that Mormons are, they're fastidious about their, their beliefs. They're ingenious perverts is what they are. You, you, you cannot, I've said this before, you cannot beat the, the hardworking American spirit of, of, the, of the pervert, you know? No. Like, they're just gonna... <laughs> this country was founded on perversion. That's your political speech as you're, you're going across the country. You can't, the heart of America... This nation was built on perverts. <laughs> That's your Joe Biden reaching across the aisle. Can't we all get along? We're all perverts here. Reach against the aisle and give a handy to somebody, <laughs> but don't look at them because then it doesn't count. Reach around the aisle. There, there was a politician this week that uh, just did i think he was like an independent in new york that p- did a like well i'm free i'm pro sex work and like sex positive oh yeah i saw that so he just filmed a sex video with himself and it, well not an, an, an adult performer it wasn't oh, just cool. him just jerking it yeah it like it's on pornhub you could check it out like i i, I mean i checked it out it's congratulations okay. to that man never holding office <laughs> yeah i mean it's probably I don't know, he's, a, he's running third party in new york he's probably not gonna oh win well anyway. damn it i like the cut of his jib 
Yeah. What a good strat for increasing your like Pornhub viewership is by running for office and then saying, "Hey, I also I also do porn." If anyone's oh, interested in that, po- oh, you think it was porn for, porn first, then office, not the yeah. other way around. Well, his whole policy was porn first. So I subscribe think, I think. to my OnlyFans twenty twenty four. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people do it to, for like books all the time. People can do it for like way dumber shit. <laughs> Damn, maybe we should be doing that for now. I'm not even gonna throw that idea out there. No. Uh, welcome to Goosebuds, by the way. Hello. Uh, hello. I'm I'm one of your hosts, uh, Chad. I'm Paul. I'm Kevin. And we are joined by uh, the wonderful guest, uh, Anthony Birch. Anthony, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, Anthony, you are a writer yourself. Uh, internet, internet funny man is definitely what you put on your business cards. Um, <laughs> yeah, my business cards because I'm a 1920s door-to-door salesman. <laughs> <laughs> You never gotten business cards ever in your career? I have, and then they sit on my desk for years, yeah, ungiven to anybody. Because if I ever meet somebody, I've ne- well, A, I've never met somebody who liked me and wanted to spend more time with me afterwards. And B, <laughs> even if I had, I would have just been like, I'm on Twitter. We'll talk on Twitter. Like, it doesn't. No, nobody keeps those. We'll find each other. Yeah, that's probably a dying business now that I think about it. Shout out to business card, uh, I don't know, mom and pop stores just suffering during the recession. Anyway, Anthony, you uh, are a writer, and we asked you to join us to cover uh the great master rl stein's goosebumps 2000 series book scream school Mm -hmm. anthony what is your history with goosebumps i was uh i think like most kids pretty into goosebumps initially i remember reading phantom of the auditorium oh yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and loving it and i read you know a good and especially i had the extra bonus of my english teacher being like goosebumps aren't real books and i was like that makes me want to read them more Mm -hmm. (laughs) so I feel like I read like 10 or 15, liked them a lot. Beast from the East was probably my favorite. Yeah, that's a fun one. That one's great. And uh, yeah, and then like most people, I I fell off once I learned about jerking off and I haven't looked at them <laughs> sort of mm-hmm. since until until this one now. Is Goosebumps a pre-sex book? I hadn't thought about it. It's certainly not a post-sex book. <laughs> Uh, sadly, it is for us. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe an instead of sex book. There's a period of time where I tried to I tried to keep flirting with R.L. Stein on Twitter by telling him he was more like R.L. Fine, and he never responded to me. Wow! God damn it! He loves his wife so goddamn much. That's the that's the real thing. Ah, that's the real scary thing is monogamy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, to find out, just find out that R.L. R.L. Stein just has like multiple wives would be my. <laughs> although, although he has not typically portrayed wives very well in his book, like especially Bride of Slappy comes to mind. Mm. No, that's mm. true. Um, trying to think of many times where uh, the theme. Well, in this book, he portrays husbands so poorly that the the wife <laughs> automatically looks good. Yeah, this is actually the first, yeah, real, real good mom, bad dad. This is a terror. Um, this is one of the one of the worst dads. Top bad dad. As we should get into it. I, I'll ask Anthony. Do you have any familiar with Goosebumps two thousand as opposed to straight up Goosebumps? Not that I did that not know different. Goosebumps two thousand existed. Damn, that marketing did not hit you. Okay, <laughs> this is really just more Goosebumps, but with a Millennium branding. But yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I was dealing with nine eleven, so. <laughs> And this was post uh, Scholastic Book Fair, so like I don't think. Oh yeah, no. If it wasn't a Scholastic Book, book Fair, I didn't care about it. You had to be you had to be seeking out a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. We're what we're like 10, 15, 20 books into Goosebumps two thousand so far. They're like they've been a little bit edgier. Um, may, maybe uh, uh... it's still got some some hallmarks for. I'd be curious to see which ones hit for you, Anthony, as we go through it. Maybe yeah, maybe we just jump in. I mean, this is a rowdy, like, again, not knowing anything else about Goosebumps 2000, but the very premise of this book and the structure of it is so rowdy for what I expected as a Goosebumps fan from my youth. It, like, blew me away that this is what the book actually is. In what way? Okay, unpack the rowdiness for a little bit. So, like, my memory of every Goosebumps book growing up was kid exists, kid stumbles upon some some X-Files but with no teeth kind of situation. Mm-hmm. Kid cock talks to his parents, tries to get them to believe him. No authority figure believes him, so the kid eventually has to solve it on his own. And everyone that I read, again, with the exception of Beast of the East, uh, ends with things being more or less fine for the kid. Right. I was not prepared for a book that is just, hey, spooky things exist. Nah, I'm just fucking with you. Hey, no, but no, <laughs> really, they exist now. Nah, I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> You know what's really scary? Narcissism. That's what's scary. <laughs> yeah, I guess the horror is that you have you have a dad who thinks it's okay to like 
sco- spook you all the time and, yeah. and, and call you a big wuss. Yeah. I would argue the real terror of this book is being raised in the Hollywood uh, entertainment complex. I thought you, mm. I, I could see that. It was kind of cool as a uh, as a non-LA kid, you know? Like, I can imagine mm-hmm. this would probably be really sick as a kid to read, to be like, oh, his dad is a director? That's awesome. And it would, you know, and then to see, then to see the horrors unveiled. There's a lot of specificity to some of the the, mm-hmm. the scenes taking place on film shoots and stuff that like this feels like whoever wrote this was, you know, I don't know if it's R.L. Stein having been on, you know, a film set while they were doing something and just knowing the details of like, oh, yeah, we can just do the back of this guy's head because he kind of looks like him. It kind of does. Yeah, maybe maybe they had shot the Goosebumps TV show by now. Or... Could, yeah, 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 definitely. They definitely did. And I think I was with you on that, Anthony. I was kind of like taking note of being like, this is a pretty accurate representation of, of you know, just like the there were a lot of little things, a lot of little details that were really nailing it. Mm-hmm. The part where it's like, we're going to go to Westwood to UCLA and do a little shopping. I was like, I know where that is. I hate going to that place. <laughs> <laughs> Totally nailed it. Um, yeah, we should maybe we should lay it out a little bit for our listeners. Uh, this is the story of why am I suddenly blanking on his name that we heard a million times? Jake Banyan. <laughs> Ban- that's right. Yeah, I come here in Seinfeld Banyan every time I heard his last name. Hey, I have a I have a really quick question. Is sure. um, why is the subtitle to Scream School Student Body Stock? Pretty problematic <laughs> opening there, right off the cover. <laughs> The cover of the book has nothing to do with anything in the book. Nope, also, no, the no. name of it. This feels very much like they had the exterior of the book done first, and then went now fill it with 110 pages, and we don't care how you do Anthony, it. Anthony, you are very, you are very wise. I think we have, I think we have found that Tim Jacobus, who I assume did this cover of not one another one, is usually doing the cover based on just a title at most. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> he is given the prompt screen school, and then all right, well, I'll see what happens here because yeah, this guy on the cover is not. In the book, this melting troll doll that's on the cover yeah. is def- definitely never makes an appearance. Uh, and yeah, the the whole uh, stalker thing. I mean, maybe yep. we're talking. I you know I had a theory on it, Kevin, that maybe we got a little more uh, of the Scream School franchise, and they had to pull that because maybe it was a little too spooky for kids. That's my guess. Sure, that's my sure. only. But guess. we all know we all know that Johnny Scream is way hotter. In, oh, in without the a doubt, Rad Donner ever. would not look like that. Ever well, even in makeup, even in makeup, we'll we'll get we'll get to him. Paul. Okay, I'm sorry, I, I know I'm jumping the gun. <laughs> uh, so we, we begin with uh, Ron and Rita, two kids, just going through a haunted house to prove that they're not uh, chicken because their school is called Scream School derisively. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, <laughs> they attempt to open a door, but guess what, fucker, Johnny Scream is here. And uh, he's like Beetlejuice meets David S. Pumpkins, but he'll fucking kill you. He's got like a um like a Freddy Krueger thing going. He's got like Freddy Krueger, but he's got a, a weapon that isn't built into him. I was picturing straight Beetlejuice. Okay. Okay, sure. Anthony, how did you see him? Doug Jones from Hocus Pocus, the, okay. the zombie guy. Yeah, he's described as like missing parts of his face and like uh, there's like bone showing and like whatever. I, I think I think he's still like bangable though, probably. Without a doubt. Sure. Yes. Are there, is there in this universe, is there weird uh, Tumblr art too much of it of Johnny Scream? Yes. Yeah. Definitely. He's definitely the one slur kind of thing. <laughs> I don't understand that one slur thing. Get a bass guitar. <laughs> and we get Johnny Scream's g- a classic catchphrase, hello, at the end of the first <laughs> chapter. We find out the rest of the thrust of this book if anyone wants to get it. Yeah, the whole ex- expositional argument that happened was all a part of a movie that we were watching the scene of. And our main character uh, has fallen out. Or the chair was broken. The chair broke on Jake, our main character, who fell through... Mm. Uh, ruining the take and his father emery who insists that he calls him emery uh so that, so that they can be more as friends i love that detail that's so good it's a great <laughs> the, instantly the dynamic of these characters is just wrong and off-putting and and it really kind of the, probably the most interesting relationship dynamic in any goosebumps book we've experienced and we've read a hundred of these things yeah, I, I, I responded so strongly, like I recoiled to Emery, especially a dad. In my, in my experience, that's like, oh, uh, when you're a teenager, you're trying to rebel against your parents and break away. And so you start insisting on calling your dad Ron. Even if his name's not Ron. <laughs> Even if his dad's not Ron, you just call him Ron. And it kills him inside and they wish you call him dad. To have the father do it the other way is so oh. like un, unattached. I think one of his lines is, is like, well... Friends call each other by their first names, so call me that. So, and it like strips away an attachment very, very cruelly. 
that part where Jake wants to call him dad, but he's like, but Emery won't hear of it. It's like, wow, that's some fucked up behavior. And we've had, <laughs> we've had like uh, kids be told that like their parents regret their birth or whatever. Like we've, we've had some bad parents on Goosebuds, but like, I think Emery Banyan is like maybe the, the biggest villain of Goosebumps yeah. so far. He's a real piece of shit. He's a piece of shit. He's taking, he's negging his son constantly. Uh, so Emery is the, I guess the creator. I was trying to figure out like where I mean, he's the director. I'm presumably, yeah. I mean, I was like, who writes these scripts? Is there a, I was trying to figure out if he's like Carpenter or if he was more of a, like, I'm just kind of doing this, but he is mm. on the Scream School franchise. He is the king of horror. So I would say that he's probably, you know, like a, I don't know, like a, a craven or something like that you know uh, yeah i guess like a stephen king of sorts i was that was my reference point but even i know he was a writer who when he directed i think he like famously was on coke when he did him that would actually explain a lot of emery's behaviors if he was just coked up all the time it would yeah it might it might excuse a couple of them even yeah that's very true it's very very true uh what, what, are, what are they shooting i think they're shooting like scream school five at this point yeah which I already don't believe. There's never been a, f- a horror franchise where the person, the helm, where the director was happy to stick around mm. for five fucking movies. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. I'm like, I trying to think of a single one. Uh, Emery's other uh, big toxic trait is that he's always kind of like gaslighting his son. I guess I don't even know if I'm using that correctly. He's no, always yeah. fucking with his son, just like being like, "If you're scared, it's okay. Just admit you're scared." His his son's just like trying to be cool he's just trying to like live a normal life jake is cool but his dad keeps putting him in the spotlight jake is cool i think jake's a cool kid and i think he doesn't deserve anything that he's getting from emory in this book i don't think jake's a cool kid yeah cool's not the word i would choose but he's (laughs) he's cool to me guys he he doesn't deserve to be bullied i will give him that yeah (laughs) and everyone in his fucking life is bullying him Oh my god. Like with concerted like dramatic efforts, everyone is bullying him at all times. I, I think to Jake's credit, I usually just cannot at this point, you know, the socialist in me, I cannot root for a rich kid character. Mm. I felt for Jake. Yeah. Even when he was in his his limo Hollywood, Beverly Hills in limo or his mansion where they're playing basketball on his on his own court and like he's just getting triple teamed by his two friends and his dad. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I feel for this I feel for this kid. Yeah. It's fucking great. Big Jacob Dylan energy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, Emery, Emery is is very set up. Like Emery is obsessed with scaring Jake, which is strange because it's like Jake is scared all the time. I mean, yeah. he, he, he denies it. He's like, I wasn't scared, but you just saw him scream. Mm-hmm. And it's there's some sort of. It's pretty. It's, yeah. It's messed up because he does it under the guise of it's good to be emotionally honest with yourself. Uh, and I don't know. I don't know that Emery's being emotionally honest with himself either. It's all. It, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of uh, projection. A lot, almost. Of, a lot of projection yeah. and just a lot of passing on of some narcissistic traits in here. Yeah, it's almost like if Jake would just admit that he's scared, I'll I'll stop doing it. And it doesn't feel like that's actually the case. No, I don't, I don't think that would work with Emery. Hey, let's all share like you know problematic things that our dads did while we were growing up. My dad would cover when we were driving uh, sometimes somewhere. He would just randomly cover the compass at the top of the car and scream at me, where are we going? What direction are we going? <laughs> That's cool. That's just a survival tactic. I don't know. <laughs> and if you got it wrong, you'd be like, no. Yeah. I mean, just tell me. I was like, I don't know. Pull your hands. You got to know where you're going. I don't know what it is with boomer men that they all have a natural understanding of north, south, east, and west that just skipped our generation. <laughs> <laughs> well, dad drilled it into me. I do know right now I am looking at the northwest. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't have that, even though my dad did something similar. (laughs) My dad once saw me reading an Agatha Christie book, and he was like, what are you reading? I said, Agatha Christie, and he, like, scoffed and went, don't old women read those? And I never read another Agatha Christie book. (laughs) Wow. I'm trying to think. Uh, my da- my dad's pretty cool. He likes. Yeah, Kevin's got the coolest guitar. fucking dad. Who, yeah. like, plays Warhammer with him and stuff. Yeah, it's not it's not fair. One time he wiped out on his motorcycle, and I had to fucking <laughs> drive him to the hospital so he could get his pinky reset. That's kind of a pain. That's in the still ass. pretty That's cool. cool as hell. <laughs> <laughs> That's what a piece of shit you are for for <laughs> saying that when the rest of us are talking about how our dads failed us. You're like, oh, my dad fucking did a cool thing on a motorcycle, and he loved me so much that he trusted me to take care of him. You don't know the half of it. I'm hearing it now. I'm hearing. <laughs> it all right i'm sorry <laughs> it's impossible for kevin's dad not my to dad left cool. when i was young well my dad took me to see john cena once no wait that's a good thing oh <laughs> i thought the assignment was sharing dad stories i didn't get i didn't understand what we were doing commiseration <laughs> oh, fuck. golly 
I promise I'm miserable about other things. It's just my dad kind of rips. <laughs> <laughs> I th- I think there's there's so much like yeah like mental torture. I think you said gaslight, Kevin. I, it's it's not the exact way he's doing yeah, it's it. Not but there's really something. That, yeah. There's some sort of 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 teasing. It's a complete. He's just not listening. Emery does not listen to Jake at all. And I I, I don't know if any of you have had friends with fathers like that. My father didn't do that, but. Uh, I've definitely had friends that were like that. And it's just, I, you know, I think that's why I thought Jake was cool. Cause I got it. I understood it. I know where he's coming from. It's tough when you got a dad who doesn't listen to you. He, he, he this, yeah. this is burn. Mm. I had to write this one burn down in the beginning. So, uh, <laughs> they're at the, they're on the set and they're going home for dinner, uh, that night. And, uh, Jake's mom is like the Jake's dad. Emery is like, what did you get for dinner? And she's like, Oh, I got takeout chicken. I didn't have time for anything. And he looks at <laughs> He looks at Jake and he goes, chicken for a chicken, huh, Jake? <laughs> Ooh. Got his ass. That's what he's got to deal with every goddamn day. And so the fact that Jake is he's even can have friends and can and can exist outside of the, uh, you know, outside of the set. Out of he, the burn board. Outside of the burn board. He's got, you know, he's got a, he's, he's, he's doing okay. I think Jake's doing I okay. Also, I also, I'm glad you picked that up, Paul, because I, I don't want to throw too much judgment on, on Mrs. Mrs. Banyan, but like, she writers were meeting her at the dinner table. We we're setting up a very cliche Hollywood thing of like she was an actress, she was in some commercials, and then her husband's film career took off, so she retired. Right. Uh so she's a stay-at-home mom that also has a at least one maid or nanny that isn't mentioned. And Mrs. Banning was like, I didn't have to, I didn't have time to cook today. What were you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Probably it's- following the maid around to see if she stole anything. <laughs> <laughs> she just got kfc which is listen sometimes you gotta just get delivery for your food it's fine i'm not trying to shame her but there's a little something there of like i felt like an arrested development character of i this is the best i could do it's like at what age can a child have gin for dinner (laughs) (laughs) yeah um i i had forgotten about the massive burns as i was judging mrs banyan there's more there's Uh, more coming so (laughs) <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so where, where's I think that goes? It's, it is purely that like Emery is continuously challenging Jake to just admit that you're scared. Yeah. Yep. And then because it'll create like emotional strength in you that you should embrace it. Uh, and Jake's like, I love horror. In fact, there's a time I, th- I thought it was so kind of weirdly tragic that like Jake mentions going over to I think it's Carlos is not Chelsea's house mm. where another rich kid. They have like a giant indoor theater and they love to just watch like classic monster movies. Right. Yeah. Uh, and that feels so much like, meanwhile, your dad is Wes Craven making scream movies and you guys are not connecting whatsoever. It's a very um, tragic disconnect. That is that is very subtle. That's a good thing to pick up on, Chad. I, I, I like that that sort of exemplifies how they can't really connect, even though they do like the same things. It's not really enough when Emery is this big of a tool. I wrote down in my notes here that we're about like a little over a quarter in and uh, no school has happened yet. In the, in the, <laughs> yeah. yeah. In the, the entire time I was like, okay, so eventually he's going to school and someone's going to scream. Yes. 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 Yeah. Surely. <laughs> yeah. I was expecting like maybe there's the onset tutor and that will be the, the real nightmare. Uh, you know, the four hours of mandatory. If you're on set, you have to at least have some sort of classes. Nope. That's not the case either. Mm-hmm. And instead of school, we get like a weird dream ballet. It's not really setting anything up either. Right. It's, it's uh yeah. Wet green fog that opens. And I believe Johnny scream yeah. is like, I can't let you go home. And he just, there, his hands get in his melty face. At that moment, there's a stream sequence, and I'm like, all right, so we are we jump to him waking up, and I'm waiting to see, because again, I'm looking for the school, too. I'm waiting for what, when's, when are we going to see some screams in some schools? And he wakes up, and I'm like, this is going to be a double fake out. We got to have a double fake out. No, it's just a, we just have a dream sequence just to, I guess, to squeeze a, a scare in there. I guess it's just a, a free scare. I kept assuming it was going to be foreshadowing for like, actually, something is a riot with Johnny Scream. And this this dream is sort of a portent of what's going to happen. And, you know, Johnny Scream going going mad is what's going to have him have some interesting conflict with his dad of like, no, your star is actually really crazy. Oh, okay, but come on, kid, you're being over dramatic. And the fact that the entire book is just like, nah, he's just a big old wuss. Like, it's over and over again, like, nah, he's just a fucking ding dong who sucks. And everything he thinks is true is wrong. If anything, the actor for Johnny Scream is just real nice. Yeah, he's cool. He's chill. It, Rad Donner is the father that Jake needed. Well, in his entire well, life. okay, guys. I don't want to. I don't want to shatter your world this early. Uh-oh. But 
Rad Donner is not the only person who plays Johnny Scream. He's played by another man named Carl earlier in the book. And yes, I did look I did look this what? up. What? I'm not saying that Rad Donner is a fucking scab and that Carl like <laughs> tried to unionize or like get get paid better or something and he was dropped for Rad Donner. But I'm just saying Rad Donner is not the only person who plays Johnny Scream. Okay. I mean, that, that's actually probably accurate. I think every famous Hollywood movie monster at some point gets played out. Gets I mean, recast. Who was the longest one was uh, Freddy, right? Um, Robert Englund, like, yeah. Robert Englund probably did it the longest. Someone will, someone will know better if it went longer, but I think Michael's been replaced by multiple times and uh, Jason, all of these guys. So I guess we, we were, if it's Scream School 5 and 6... Yeah, there's a, All right, it makes sense. A of, he's, he's aging out. Rad, and look, with a name like Rad Donner, he's got a, a beautiful <laughs> career ahead of him. So I think I just want to, I just need to go back to the dinner one more time, guys. I'm sorry. I know we moved please. past no, the dinner, please. but there was a moment that I just thought uh, we just sail over in this, in this dinner. And it's when Jake is talking about how he isn't scared of the things that his father does. And he's mm-hmm. railing on about it. And Chelsea chimes in and she says, you know what scares me? The fact that I never get scared. I'm not afraid of the dark or afraid of movies or nightmares <laughs> yeah, or anything. Yeah, what an asshole she is. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if that's normal. I, she is an asshole, but also she's like really processing something there and they just yeah. completely blow over <laughs> they it. They completely move past it. <laughs> move, uh, and I, I thought that was a real sad moment for Chelsea. <laughs> I think his mom says right after that, let's change the subject. Yes. Like, too dark. Too, too dark, hey, Chelsea. Chelsea, I'm your friend's mom, not your fucking therapist. <laughs> so let's move on. <laughs> also sort of implies like, I know what happened to you that's made you like this and oh I don't God. really want to unpack it in front of my kid. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> It's good, good dark, good dark moment that I just couldn't let go of. Uh, I'm glad I'm glad you brought us back you're, there because it's it gets um it gets kind of like stupider from here. Uh, we we go to uh <laughs> we we go to back on set right. Yeah, mm-hmm. if anything, Emery's bringing his son Jake out of school often. Jake is not getting an education because him and Chelsea are like, come on set and be an extra in this movie. Right. Yeah. I, right. I guess it is summer technically. So. Oh, okay. I forgot it was called out to be summer. Again, to yeah. Anthony's point, uh, we are expecting a scream school and he sets this during summer. So uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know, man. Just seems like, I don't know. I would be kind of pissed off as a child if nothing school related happened in this, but I oh, am yeah. a fucking nerd. <laughs> no, I would have been the exact same way. I've been like, I, I remember one of the first times I ever, my memories of really crying a lot was I went to a library with my mom where they were doing like kids, uh, uh, a little like short films basically for the summer. Bring in your kid. We'll show them a cute little video or whatever. And there was one called like the bear's birthday or something like that. And it didn't <laughs> have a scene where the bear had a birthday cake. And what? I bawled because I was furious. I was like, I <laughs> wanted to see a bear with a birthday cake. What is going on? And I was the only one crying. And I know I would have had the exact same reaction to this book. <laughs> the birthday was metaphorical. I guess. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if this book had been called like "Lights, Camera, Phantasm" or something, <laughs> that's great. Like, yeah, great. Okay, it's a Hollywood movie. They, they've done this, right? Like, there's been a uh, shocker on Shock Street is vaguely Hollywood adjacent, right? Mm-hmm. This it, this is a cool. It's a cool setting that, to do this on a big budget set. There's a little bit of an escapism for a reader, but yeah, not at all what was promised. No, um, it he really has to he really has to jam the the school in there at the end. Yeah, the Goosebumps wiki says uh, that this was called the King of Horror okay. uh, for oh. for the first part of its uh, its life. Mm. That's better. In fact, yeah, look at the the French covers of it uh, are like not have nothing to do with what is going on. It's an old man holding a birthday cake. A birth. In fact, there's a birthday cake. So Anthony, you got. I should have watched you that. You <laughs> should have gotten the French version of this book. You'd have been happy. <laughs> But that's like the French can call it like they're they're more down with impressionism than we are. They could call that's they true. could call the they can make that whatever they want. They're more also open. Calling it the King of Horror is more accurate to who the true antagonist of the story is. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I even like it. Said I, I was reading. Now I'm looking at the wiki. It says uh, the French version, which originally was in the original Goosebumps series. That's in, I didn't realize they they branded them differently. Not in 2000. Oh. Uh, but his title was translated to. Kashima and Suri, which means in English, serial nightmares. Ooh. The tagline was also changed to 
uh, a French expression roughly translated to hoisted with his own spittard, which is, <laughs> I guess that applies. Yeah, no, to it what does. It does. Yeah. In the end. Yeah. That's definitely what happens mm-hmm. to, uh, to John, Car- not John Carpenter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That guy, I almost, I almost don't want to insult Carpenter by calling him this, but that's very yeah. much. A, yeah. God, Carpenter is so fucking rad nowadays. If you guys see him in interviews, he's just like. Smokes weed and plays Xbox. Yeah, it's fucking great. Plays <laughs> plays heavy guitar with his son on albums. Yeah, somebody was saying uh, that there there are two there are only two kinds of creator it's okay to be, and one of them is out Al- is is John Carpenter going like, "Hey, give me the check so I can smoke weed," and the yes. other is Alan Moore, who's like, "I divorced myself from this problem <laughs> that it was my gene." Those are the only two you can be, and it's still cool. <laughs> yeah, I think you can porque no los dos that and just be be one yeah. on the outside and yeah. be the other on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> one time I had I had a very this is not to the humble brag but I had a very short conversation with John Carpenter once where I was like Ooh. I didn't like Rob Zombie's version and he was like yeah <laughs> like even he cared less about it than I did like I was more yeah. upset about that than he was I was he like moved this on. guy's fucking he's happier than I will ever be I, I was watching a horror yeah I was watching a horror con panel of his at some point that was like fans saying stuff like oh you, you have any thoughts on the David Gordon Green Halloween he's like I didn't know they were doing that yeah <laughs> my thought is that they paid me. Yeah, I find out when a check arrives. I'm like, cool, great, Beautiful. more money, thank you. Beautiful uh, man. It's such a great dis- disaffected way to to separate yourself from from remakes and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, Emery is no John Carpenter. No, far uh, from it. He he uh, brings. I think the next thing is he brings Jake and Chelsea on set to be a presumably unpaid extras. Mm-hmm. Of the yep. 90s, who knows if SAG after was worried about that. Uh, and now there will be. A school, an on-set school. Finally. Uh, the scene set of the main character is trapped in an art room closet, and you are all kids just fucking around. doesn't matter what you're doing, but uh, I guess at some point one of the kids will say, look at what I made, and suddenly there are snakes everywhere. Which is a movie I would watch, I guess. <laughs> sure. I, I was looking for more of a setup of like a kid drew a snake, and then, I don't know. The, the painting became snakes, but I think it's just sudden snakes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As long as a child is being bitten repeatedly by snakes, I don't care how we get there. It's funny how often RL teeters on the brink of like absolute total brilliance because Snake School is absolutely a book I would read. Oh my. Is that a snake? Is that a school for snakes or a school for <laughs> festival snakes? <laughs> I would read the school for snakes in a fucking heartbeat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think the cover would clarify, but I think you'd find out that it would be like a dual meaning, like Venture Brothers or whatever. Listen, listen, Chad. <laughs> the books, the book's gonna do good in in France. They are they're a little more yeah. comfortable with ambiguity over there. Very impressed. There's not a single school or snake in Snake School. <laughs> <laughs> I was bawling the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Only tears. Uh, I think. I think while they're on set and getting set up, Jake gets to meet the uh, the lead, who is some Devin. pretty boy. Yeah, who was, Devin. De- oh, Devin, who was uh, was previously in a a vampire TV show. So I was just picturing Vampire Diaries. But Devin gives him a, a beautiful compliment and says that he looks like he could be his twin. Uh, which really mm. juices Jake up for a brief moment until Ch- Chelsea knocks him back down to earth. Pretty flirty. It is. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty, pretty, flirting pretty by, inappropriately flirting. Flirting yeah. by the craft, the craft table, and uh, Devin grabs multiple cherry danishes uh, and walks off after saying that um, king shit, which, king shit, king shit. <laughs> 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 know your value on that fucking set. Get as much as you can from that craft table. All those cherry danish. Just pocket some of them as he walks away. Yeah. <laughs> and these, uh, so they go set up to do the scene. Uh, and the Danish wreak their havoc upon upon Devin's intestinal system, and he cannot do the scene. And this is when uh, Emery finally decides that his son is worth something, uh, and <laughs> says that he will shoot the back of his head, uh, and puts him in the cl- in the closet. Now, I'm not a film person, mm. um, but I don't understand why you'd need to film these two scenes concurrently. What do you mean? Well, no, I don't understand why you need to film the classroom and the, um, and the inside scene. the closet scene. I don't know how much you're getting from like a door vibrating. Maybe they were going to do some really crazy <laughs> stuff where the camera pushes through the locker and follows him into the classroom. Like, like really... panic room. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say that Emery is a master of optimizing his day and his shots which is why mm-hmm. the uh, Scream School series has been able to go for so long because he is capable of keeping his production cost. He, he keeps it under budget. Yeah. Far, far down. Uh, a weakness which Jake will exploit later. <laughs> 
Uh, and we learned that there are several uh, dozen live snakes on set. Uh, but don't worry, they've been defanged, which really made me sad. I don't know if that's still the standard. Uh, just feel bad for those little snakes. That is little a little snakes. sad. Just, just, get a, their... just get a non-poisonous snake. We don't know. We don't fucking yeah, that defanging. I, did, I like, it was such a visceral image of defang. I was like, oh my god, yeah, they probably did do that. Oh no. Maybe maybe, maybe nowadays they're, they've upped the standards a little bit. Uh, I mean, especially if any of us are going to sell the script to snake school. We need to make a strong <laughs> stance right now that no snakes are defanged. In the yeah, I mean, if RRR has taught me anything, it's that every animal can be CG and I yeah. don't enjoy the movie any less. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. That's very, very true. Hmm. I'm, ready to, I'm ready to sign a, a no snake uh, defanging pact with all of you right now. Thank this is you. a pro snake podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather let a snake bite me than have it get defanged. Um, yeah, I, I imagine if I try to defang a snake, it'd be like Daffy Duck. With the, I can only do it once. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Jake is now placed. Uh, yeah, the back of your head is going to be a star. Uh, but hey, uh, oh, while while he's getting set up, someone's talking about how a snake got loose. Uh, one of the snakes is missing, and right before lights, camera, action, Jake feels something coiling around his leg. Uh, and he is convinced the snake has gotten him, but uh oh, it's just a power cable. Just a power and cable. This, this was another moment where I fully believed. I was like, "All right, here's where it happens. Here's where the horror starts properly." He, somebody <laughs> unleashed a snake. Holy shit! Let's get into this. And he's on a school set. This is where it happens. We're gonna get into a Salt and Precinct Thirteen situation, but it's snakes <laughs> and somebody who let it go. This there's is gonna be many, fucking great. There's a wild rogue snake, and it's just trying to get it the whole <laughs> something. And then it's like, nah, he's just a big fucking wuss. This is pretty common. Is yeah. it really? Oh wow! It's been so long since I read a Goosebumps that I fully believed. In my memory that, oh, yeah, it's like nonstop fucking Slappy the Doll just like trying to strangle people and shit. No, that was a good one. Slappy the Doll does hit people. It hits a lot of children, and it's really cool. Also calls people to be their slaves. Uh, Yeah. Surprise. There's there's a lot lot if you'll be my slave. Slappy's fucked up. And uh, if you want to go revisit one, I would suggest those. Mm -hmm. But more often than not, yeah, RL uh, or whoever writes these really likes to pull their punches uh, and not have anyone harmed. Uh, as as much as they can, it's Man. it's it's frustrating. Two thousands have had some exceptions to that though, because like you get like uh you get like Cry of the Cat, where like there's a ghost cat tornado and some things get fucked up. So sure, <laughs> sure. There's, there's there's the odd uh the odd unique case of that. Um, RL is truly playing with the form in the in the two thousand series for sure. There's I mean, it's actually the snake is even kind of played off like a joke, right? Because it's like Jake gets kicked off set, his dad tells him he's disappointed in him, like oh why do you have to be scared of the snakes, like, that's a very fair thing to worry about, I actually would argue. Mm, um, mm. And you have to be brave. And then Jake goes to sit down and eat some, and shame eats some food at the <laughs> snack table. And womp womp, he feels the real snake curl between his legs. And we don't even get the scream. We could cut away before the scream even happens. Yeah. Yeah. That would make me cry. Yeah, it's, it's kind of played like a joke, if anything. It's fine. It's not like screams are half of the fucking title. Like, whatever. <laughs> we don't need it. Uh, Jake well, Jake goes into isolation for a couple weeks in his house. Uh, <laughs> it's like he doesn't talk to his dad as much, mm-hmm. I believe. I, mm-hmm. I thought this was like the realist part where like he still has to live with his fucking dad. So he's like, yep, same shit, different day. Back to <laughs> back to trying to set healthy boundaries with a parent that'll never respect them. Right, right. Yeah. This is great because so Jake is hanging around the house. It is his birthday. Uh, he wakes up and he knows his mom's going to make him the the blueberry pancakes that he loves so much. Uh, mm. Except she's <laughs> except she's not home. She's not home uh, on his birthday, and the, and the maid tells him that uh, there's a note for him in it. The note says, "You're going to go anywhere you want. Can't be in and out though," which is messed up. And again, a pretty pretty tangible detail of living in L.A. Right? Mm. There, he yeah. this must have been a period. He must have been out there for a little bit because I know R.L. is a is a New York guy at heart, but there he had to spend some time out there. Uh, Jake uh, is then told that there will be a limo showing up for him. Limo shows up. He gets in. Uh, limo driver's real cool. Uh, he has a real <laughs> chill drive over there. Uh, and then he's dropped off at the studio where a Lynchian-like man appears. A tiny Lynchian man appears uh, in an mm. oversized suit and uh, leads him on a creepy tour to the back lot. To Studio 13. To Studio 13. And there's there's a fair amount of Stranger Danger vibes going on. This is kind of this is kind of scary, like even from just oh. like an adult fear kind of. <laughs> Not to mention the other Stranger Danger beforehand, where just I couldn't stop worrying about it. When I believe it's uh, one of the Johnny uh, Johnny Scream actors is like, "Hey, have you played the new video game?" 
uh, it's pretty good. I got it on my laptop in my in my trailer. If you want to go check it out, I'm like, don't do that. That's Rad Donner. I, I I can't believe you would besmirch Rad Donner in that way, Chad. I I tr- <laughs> listen. I want to trust Rad Donner, but just I've seen I've seen how the sausage is made. I've seen the horrors of this industry. Rad Donner is sick and plays video games in the '90s as an uh, as an older man, and I think that's really cool. So I can't believe I you would. Say I don't that know, dude. I, I'm hearing a lot of things about Rad Donner, and like he's a union buster and he's a child predator. <laughs> so. <laughs> Some people are just saying some stuff about Rad Donner that you may not like. Yeah, so he goes into this, like, back, like, goes into uh, Studio 13, and he gets locked in, and that's, like, ooh, we're, we're ramping up to something. He sort of wanders through the, the like, dark soundstage, and uh, he ends up, like, in a costume room where he has my favorite moment of the entire uh, book, oh. where mm-hmm. he, he picks up a gorilla costume oh, and yeah. says out loud to himself, <laughs> cool. Cool, yeah. <laughs> and then thinks that it smells like old meat. Um, in high school, I did have access to a gorilla costume. What it smell and like? And I did use it for mischief. <laughs> it did kind of smell pretty bad. <laughs> uh, so I guess like t- two specters rise out of the pile of clothes. Yep. Uh, and they're like, oh, good, you're here. Now we can make our movie. And two more specters rise out as if just to kind of double the ante here. <laughs> uh, and they are like tackling and grabbing and just like, I. they were going to force uh, poor Jake to make a movie, much like the way Kim Jong-un uh, <laughs> those two directors. They also show him the severed head of his crush and he starts crying. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty rowdy. I was like, oh shit, okay, this is this is definitely where it happens. This is where the book goes into fucking overdrive. We're doing this shit. No. Anthony, I'm sorry that you kept having to think that. I, I re- <laughs> literally every single time they it, this movie this book was nothing but like the part in a slasher movie where you think there's gonna be a jump scare and then it's the cat. It's just the cat for like 110 pages. And I believed it every time. It's his career. His whole damn career was like his whole career is based on lies. That's the real truth about R.L. Stein. And he thinks he's the king of horror. He's the Emery in all of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> when they describe Jake as like sobbing, I just like that made that made him not cool, but Paul's <laughs> definition of cool. Like I, I had I had empathy for like because he really believed that his friend. I'm taking was a hard line. He's cool. cool. Men also cry, Mister Cole. Cool men it, also cry. I mean, he he mourned his friend like fucking Aragorn. So like. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. That makes him cool. That makes him a little bit closer to Aragorn. But then he he does get to he does have to be hugged by his mom in front of everyone he knows. Yeah, in yeah, the yeah. Entire world. Be- again, because I'm such an idiot, I kept assuming like, oh, this is where it happens. So <laughs> his whole family betrays him. All yeah. of his people he cares about betrays him. This is like fucking Jeremy by Pearl Jam. He's gonna like lose it, <laughs> and everything is gonna get fucking really dark. <laughs> I mean, this is dark as much as just family abuse goes. Yeah, right. The the curtains pull back. There's an entire gang there. His whole family, all uh, cl- theoretically, all of Emery's employees. Uh, I think Chelsea is there. I.e., his crush is there to just watch to watch Jake just be sobbing and sad and wish him happy birthday. I think even the actors are like, Jesus Christ. We this in <laughs> it's fucked up too because the mom gets mad at this point, but she went along. She helped fashion the decapitated head of Chelsea. Like she was a part of it. <laughs> yeah. She's a, definitely like a fucking uh, collaborator in this situation. Yeah. And then she's like, I'll see which way the wind blows. And she's like, oh, he didn't like it. Now it's, now it's mom's <laughs> turn. How dare you, husband? <laughs> Honey, I was on your side the whole time. Yeah. Oh, and, and this is where Emery really deflects the blame. He's like, Jake told me he was brave. Classic victim blaming. <laughs> yeah. Oh, if he wasn't, if he wasn't brave, that's not my fault. He told me he was brave. Uh, this is where I think it cuts to Emery really goes into, uh, Emery and Jake really just don't talk for a while. Emery's on set. Right. Jake is just having his summer alone in his house. It, it feels like a schism has been placed mm-hmm. between father and son. Chelsea never shows up again for the duration of this book. <laughs> oh my God, she doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> no. This book is, is bifurcated by this party, right? Like this is yeah. like, the, this is the most... Truly, this is when Scream School begins at this point in the story. <laughs> uh, um, so happy birthday, Jake. Um, we, we come back a few months later uh, and we don't hear how Scream School 5 did, 
right? Prob- I'm assuming bad because Emery seems to be uh, in a bit of a pensive state at this point. I got to imagine that would really bring the entire crew down for the rest of the pursuit of like, hey, remember that time where we just didn't work on the movie and we just ruined a kid? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Hollywood's only ruined a kid that one time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd really be news throughout Hollywood. <laughs> It's on extra coming coming around next. <laughs> Access Hollywood. Uh, we heard a, a kid cried like a baby yesterday. Uh, Variety was was just be, was selling out the next day after this. I sent out a full page ad of Variety that says I was spooked and then a sad emoji. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah, no word on, like, if Scream School 5 went through the editing process, if they're just, like, shitting these things out like crazy, but it's still summer, and now production has begun on Scream School 6. I don't know if this is, like, a Netflix Fear Street, like, kind of thing, where it's, like... <laughs> uh-huh. They're just churning them out. Uh-huh. If this is, yeah. like, the 90s, 2000s, they are just, like, yeah, we need we need one every year. You need to work on Scream School 6. Right. They're, like, they're never going to be cameras better than this. We got to film it all now. <laughs> His de- oh yeah, his dad's going to the desert to uh, film in an old like decrepit school, right? Like an on location uh, scream school, right? He goes outside of the studio. It is here in uh, Silver City where we finally get to meet Rad Donner, oh. um, <laughs> and his glorious two and a half paragraphs of existence. <laughs> With a name like Rad Donner, though, do you really need any more than two paragraphs? <laughs> it's true. We wouldn't want him so bad if he was there longer. Right, right. <laughs> it's about the rads you don't, Donner. <laughs> yeah, I actually completely forgot the detail where he's like, you want to play video games in my trailer? And I'm like, how do you say no to Rad? Like, yeah, I'll play How do you say no to Rad Donner? How do you say no to Rad Donner? He's so cool. <laughs> so cool. Oh, my God. You got to play, you got to play uh, Hexen on his PC in his trailer? Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> what more so could you want? So this is like a pretty, I mean, this is a this setup where, like, you know, Jake is almost, without Emery ever apologizing, because of course he wouldn't, Emery is treating Jake a little bit differently here. Almost like he... He he knows what happened. Uh, things have changed a little bit. This feels a little bit of redemption of like, hey, can you help me out on this on this set? Mm-hmm. Well, now he knows he's going to get in wife trouble if he fucks with his son. It's true. <laughs> yeah, he probably got a real talking to. <laughs> the set the, the described this yeah this abandoned school in an abandoned town with a uh, a history that we will learn about in a little bit. Uh, but they're shooting here in the school. Also, I guess this goes with it. They're also building sets on there. There's a full production crew. Uh, and Emery's like, Jake, go, uh, go scout out the set for me. You know what to look for. Tell me how much work we have to do. Yeah, and he does, and he meets, he, he almost runs into a cobweb full of bugs. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there he meets, uh, the girl, uh, Mindy, who I was convinced was a ghost, uh, just me based too. on I her. Wrote I was pre- next to yeah, her. Yeah, I was prepared for yeah. this year. I was like, this is it. This, <laughs> this is, is the moment. This, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> this is that Barton Fink feeling. <laughs> Uh, Mindy, uh, Mindy says, oh, she is an extra for the film. Uh, she is just wandering through the school unsupervised, uh, but that she is from the local town and, and she's really excited to get some work in the Hollywood industry. So here's where, here's where I think Emery's entire career is based off of his ability to make movies on the cheap. He has gotten an abandoned school in a desert. Yeah. Zero. Yep. He doesn't have to pay for the location. He's getting mm-hmm. local talent. There, he's not paying SAG rates. Uh, he, you know, he's he's just he's cutting every corner possible. He's got this. Sure. He's got a he's got a, like a production line going on in there. I'm I'm you know I'm I'm picking up what Emery's doing here. He also doesn't seem to like want to do more than a couple takes. There's a couple times in this book where like the scene is messed up. And it seems like Emery just goes, move on to the next shot. Yeah, he's a, he's got a very Robert Rodriguez kind of vibe. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> we can, I can handle that. <laughs> uh, yeah, Min- and Mindy tells uh, Jake pretty quickly the tragic history of this town and that uh, this town was, was raised, uh, but it was built on top of a burial ground. So obviously they moved the bodies and the bodies were uh, moved posthumously, uh, buried somewhere else, but that the ghosts were angry and they waited until kids filled the school. Yeah. And then they tell, I think, one of the most terrifying things ever happened in Goosebumps. Was it when the kids was it when the kids' hands get stuck indoors? Because that was very scary. Uh, maybe that was part of it. How I recall what was going was that the ghosts, it's in the middle of a school day in this town, the ghosts rose up en masse and encircled the kids in the gymnasium 
and wrap them up in volleyball nets and trap them for three days. They were in there for and three days. Them in there for th- and then and when adults started to come to get them, fire shot out of the doors and it trapped the kids in there for three days. And then the kids <laughs> never talked about what happened in there. Yeah, these guys fuck. <laughs> I fucking love these guys. These, these are some cool goals. It, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's the best way you could possibly refer to them. They're cool goals. <laughs> I I like the little detail that um they they were like well we need a school but we want a mall we're not gonna move the mall let's just move this graveyard <laughs> <laughs> that's the realest fucking part of the whole story that's some America shit right there they had already laid out the blueprints they weren't gonna move it they're like let's do some desecration there'll be no consequences. <laughs> So they are shooting in a cursed, haunted school, and that also that because the town uh, died out because no one wanted to go to school there, and so the entire community moved away, leaving this ghost town. Uh, so now filming has begun, right? Yep. With new friend uh, Gregory. Everybody give it up for fucking Gregory, best character. <laughs> Thanks, Gregory. I completely forgot your name. It has the, the structure of like an MST3K movie where mm-hmm. it's like... We just got rid of this one supporting character, so I guess we have to recast him with a new one because there uh-huh. needs to be a supporting character. <laughs> yeah. Right. We had to do reshoots, so we couldn't get the guy back yet. Another another gig, so we just brought yeah. in this other kid. Can't, can't take Carlos with you. He's he's dead to us. We got to put Gregory in there. there. There's no real reason Mindy couldn't have been Chelsea. You know, just, oh, Chelsea got to come along on set because it's the summer. and She's the yeah, producer. No. She's the producer's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's no real reason Rad Donner had to be a, a character introduced no, now. Rad Donner is <laughs> sick as hell and needed to be there. <laughs> Fuck Carl. You watch your fucking mouth about Rad Donner. <laughs> we can add so many of our own ideal traits onto Rad Donner based on how little we know about him. We don't have to add anything. They're all there, Chad. Listen, we all have a parasocial relationship with Rad Donner. It's part of the Rad Donner <laughs> mystique, but we have to separate the truth from the lies. <laughs> I can't wait till Rad Donner gets canceled. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna have a bad day when that happens. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on record for rad. Don't don't Google rad Donner Wayne cocaine. It's gonna be <laughs> so <laughs> filming starts. Uh, there's a full on cafeteria scene. Uh, Emery, I think, is also just yelling at the kids like it doesn't fucking matter what you say. Just eat. We're gonna ADR it, kids. You don't know what that We're means. ADR it later. <laughs> As they take action, um, there are screams emanating through the kids as they find severed fingers and toes. Our first screams in a school, right? Yeah. Yeah. Basically the only ones we get. On page 90 of a 100-page book. It's never confirmed that these uh, fingers, toes, and a nose in the chili, it's never confirmed that these body parts aren't human. He never says, well, they're just fake. Emery claims they are, but I don't trust a word that's coming out of Emery's mouth. Yeah, he doesn't say it with a great deal of confidence. No, he's... <laughs> no that's a cover-up of we can't get sued because kids ate human body parts. Yeah, that's that's him trying to outdo fucking John Landis. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird that we start on that one because, like, a kid eating a dead a part of a dead person is, like, a, a high bar to start at. And then like some cheerleaders find a skull in the mud where mud shouldn't be. <laughs> oh, I love that scene. <laughs> the best part is that the person, the the child, Mindy, who ate the, the thumb or whatever it was, uh, then uh, she is in the next scene. She decides to, to just suck it up and to go and be in the next, be the extra in the next scene and then finds the skull. Well, yeah. Also, the, the is what's scarier, finding the skull or just that they are shooting this cheerleader doing a count, which I thought was also maybe kind of insensitive it sounds like they are doing the cheer of the actual school they mentioned that they were the pirates mm. uh, oh yeah yeah which i was like trying to figure out there's like oh maybe there was like a pirate i, I thought there's gonna be like a pirate legend and that's why it was called silver city and there's a whole treasure and shit <laughs> we we're so desperately looking for anything at all to fucking hang our hats on in this freaking book yeah. uh but while they're doing the old chant of a diseased uh deceased school uh, yeah, they just keep falling in mud. There's mud everywhere. And you know what? I've read enough of these books that I almost felt as if there weren't. They weren't even gonna find a skull. In fact, I'm pretty positive in the first draft there was nothing scary. It was just a couple of kids falling in some mud, and then they were like, "You gotta spook this up." And he's like, "I don't know. There's a fucking skull in there or something." <laughs> it up. Uh, is I just enough? gave well, you human body parts and food. You want another? All right, fine. <laughs> but the, but then like. The the third one, which like I would have just sort of swapped the order of, of one and three, but the third one is there's <laughs> the scare is the lack of Rad Donner. There's just no Rad Donner. <laughs> <in this suit. laughs> 
<laughs> like the scariest thing is imagining a world with that rad daughter. Well, it's like, yeah, they, they do action and Johnny Scream is not doing anything. And I think it's Jake that goes to like move him. And then he just like someone who's been raptured, his clothes fall and collapse <laughs> with no one inside them. Now, my question, and we never hear of Rad Donner again. No, Rad My Donner question just... is, <laughs> where the fuck is Rad Donner? Did did uh, Jake make him disappear? Does Jake have that power? Wow. He, oh, he's in his dream. He got sucked into his dream. Oh, no, he my dream. <laughs> Shit. I don't know, Rad Donner's cool as hell. He he Irish goodbyes in the middle of this movie. <laughs> he runs off into the desert naked, never to be seen again. <laughs> he's on contract, but Half Life Half Life just came out, so like he's got a. <laughs> <laughs> Is he just a really big gamer? That's his whole thing. <laughs> Gotta wait in line at the Babbage's. Jake, Jake, you don't understand the physics engine. This is so good. I just got a Voodoo 3D card, Jake. I gotta go play this thing. <laughs> uh, Emery is having a hard time. Uh, yeah. Now that now they have lost their main actor uh, for Johnny Scream. Yeah. Uh, and he is starting to panic. And we are seeing how this is weighing down on him. Uh, I think this culminates in uh, a final scene where Jake... It says, you know, like it says Jake lures his father on the weekend. Yeah, I don't yeah. remember him luring his father. <laughs> no, he lures him. Uh, well, it's, it's so, I don't, Anthony, do you, I don't know if you want to bring us home here. He does lure him here. Oh, yeah. He is, he sets the trap. The, the hunter <laughs> the, has become the hunter. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, basically, uh, well, you don't, ri- basically what happens is they're shooting a scene and Emery, to his terror, sees as everyone in the cast all the kids turn around and their faces are melting off and globs of goop are coming off them. And Embry screams and loses his mind and uh, <laughs> they run and uh, they check the gate on the camera and they see that, wait, there was no one in that room at all. I guess Ooh. they were ghosts. Even Emery's like, I guess they were ghosts. <laughs> uh, and then uh, fucking Jake turns to camera basically. And he's like, <laughs> and he goes and talks to the other extras that he hired and put in makeup and they recorded an empty classroom for a half hour before Jake's dad came in. And uh, he finally showed that other people are capable of fear. He didn't actually prove that he's not a scaredy cat, but he at no. least proved that other people are too. And he declares himself the true king of horror. He came yes. at the king and he did not miss. He, <laughs> he, Jake, this is the best. This is a revenge tale. And it is a beautiful revenge tale because here's what Jake truly did. He torpedoed his father's career by absolutely sabotaging (laughs) his entire production and running up the cost throughout it. So so much so that I'm sure there was no Scream School 7. He he was like, I'm willing to bankrupt my entire family in order to teach my dad (laughs) one lesson. I will go live with Rad Donner. It was great. I love that ending. I fully believed that this was at least going to be like a who fought slappy ending where it's like, ah, there's a little bit of hint of maybe there was something a little. But they were like, nope. This is just another bullshit nope. thing. <laughs> Nothing supernatural. You basically read a fucking family drama. That's yes. what this book was. Congratulations, <laughs> idiot. I that is appropriately frustrating, Anthony. I also think it's interesting that like this is maybe one of the not better endings. This is one of the more positive endings for our protagonist mm. that I've ever seen. Mm. Fair. Yes, yeah, very fair. Uh, yeah. usually I think like you would kind of even picked Anthony how you saw these books going. Usually there's a fake out or a thing at the end of like, we thought we made it out there, but then it turns out I was a werewolf the whole time. <laughs> like that, you know, you, 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 the, the kid got their last desserts. Mm-hmm. The last line is typically the rowdy moment. And then it, and then we just bounce out before we have to see any of the repercussions of that rowdy moment. <laughs> sure they got out of horror land and then they got it home but wouldn't you know it? there was a monster hanging on the back curb that's like here's your tickets for horror land come back again <laughs> like there's mm-hmm. always some sort of joke or yeah finer, final stinger this is just a triumphant end to jake i wouldn't actually change anything about this ending normally i'm like i've got it, a punch-up idea but for this one i'm like this is kind of awesome yeah i mean i i feel like anthony you kind of already hit a little bit how would you how would you review grade this 20 year old plus book? Uh, if it was for like a kid's uh, periodical, I'd be like, don't uh, <laughs> be like, there are other scarier things where things happen. But if it was for an adult, uh, it, you know, if it was for parents who wanted to give something completely safe, that's not going to make their child feel any emotion. I'd be like, oh, get five copies of this shit. <laughs> this is the only book your kids. You, is Harry Potter too religious for you? Fucking get them scream school. They'll be thinking nothing. All they want to do is go on the universal tour. <laughs> God damn. I love yeah. that. Want to numb your child? Give them this book. <laughs> yeah. Do you want them to just sort of stare in the middle distance and think of what might be a good story? This is the fucking book for you. 
<laughs> this is how you uh, like jokerify them into becoming a writer. You know? <laughs> yeah, they have to be able to do better than this, surely. It it it, it would be their teddy bear birthday or, or bear birthday. Yeah, bear exactly. birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think this goes to show how much this series has beaten us down and that us go- <laughs> me going, wow, a book with no scares, um, either fake outs or turning out it was all a prank. Uh, I went like, this is pretty good. Yeah, y'all sound tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just like, ooh, a book where there's order to the universe, where, where good deeds are rewarded and bad deeds are punished? What? <laughs> R.L. Stein clearly didn't write this one. I, yeah, it did not feel like R.L.'s prose at no. all. It had a few of the trademark, like, I let out a low moan or I fell on my knees sort of things. But that's something R.L. can add an, add an edit. I loved, I was like, wow, a father with characterization? This is wonderful. Like, usually the parents are just uh, two working stiffs that do not have time to listen to their children. That's typically what you get. And having a, I loved bringing Emery down to the kid's level and, and like having an actual relationship or lack thereof with his son. I would consider Emery a Goosebumps monster. Me yes. too. He's yeah, up for sure. Yeah, he could be a cover monster. Neither the living daddy. No. <laughs> oh. God, there's a better name for the book. Frick. <laughs> there's something to, there's potential in Hollywood film set is on a cursed set. Like that's already been, there's numerous cheap horror movies that have done that premise, mm-hmm. especially yeah. like found footage, ghost hunter show goes to a house. Turns out it's actually haunted. That's numerous real movies. Right. Uh, there's, there's meat on them bones. Mm-hmm. 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 It's cool. Those cool chapters where they were playing it with it. I was intrigued. You know, I was really like, oh, I wonder what's going to happen next. You know, uh, this place seems genuinely haunted. No, it wasn't. It wasn't at all. I, I feel like I leave this story. My only true disappointment being that in the like Goosebumps movies featuring Jack Black, uh, when they like bring the monsters to life out of the books, there isn't just like a dad. Who's, who's like <laughs> kind of narcissistic and disappointing. A negging dad. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm the negging dad from Scream School. And everyone would be all a real Everybody's like, head. yeah, Scream School. Yeah. Yeah. They're losing their mind in the fucking aisles. <laughs> I hope Brad Donner shows up. And he doesn't. They're like, maybe in the sequel. <laughs> we still love him. Every does that pretentious director thing where he puts everything through his two fingers to make it look like it's a view screen. Just <laughs> yeah. to picture everything. That's how he chases you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's the one that escapes at the end because no one can like really tell him apart from like a normal person. He <laughs> slips into the crowd. Yeah. yeah. Oh, now that's true terror. It's like Dark Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful. Uh, beautiful. Yeah, a- Anthony, maybe you're making me like I feel these, these books have really beaten us. Um, <laughs> I feel like that's all I have to say about this book. Do you guys have any other final thoughts, uh, Anthony? Especially defer. Yeah, to you Anthony. Guys. What do you What do you think? How was the experience? I enjoyed the process of reading the book for this podcast uh considerably more than i thought i would okay good i was like oh you know yeah. I'll, I'll do this over a couple of lunch breaks or whatever and i just read the whole thing in one go and i was like mm. oh shit i forgot how audaciously bizarre these things were where <laughs> uh-huh. you could set up a thing and then just refuse to pay it off do something <laughs> with no setup it was great it's amazing how against writing techniques it goes it like breaks <laughs> yeah. so many writing techniques techniques it's wonderful it's somehow they've done the inverse of choose your choose your metaphor video games or porn where it's like mm-hmm. the story is there to justify the other stuff. Right. Um, but like this, it's like you, you're buying it for the cover and the stuff <laughs> between the cover is there to justify the money that you spent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Damn. Jesus Christ. Well, <laughs> I love having a guest on uh, on the show because it is it is it, it's good to like recalibrate like I feel like I'm you from the past when the world was full of possibility right, and your heart's right. big. <laughs> yeah, to hear you saying how you kept thinking this would be the chapter that things got spooky was that's a yeah, I felt for you. A beautiful... Before my heart was broken. Yeah, no, it was great. <laughs> my sweet summer child. <laughs> Uh, speaking of speaking of writing, Anthony, uh, you got some some new writing projects coming out soon, I believe, including God of War Ragnarok, right? Yeah, uh, I think November some 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 first first couple first half of November, uh, God of War Ragnarok comes out. I was a senior writer on that. Hell yeah! Oh, sure. um, and uh, other than that, I do a podcast called Dungeons and Daddies, and uh, that's basically it. Wow. Super, super funny. Just and as you, I think you probably have to always justify it is a podcast where you are you you are DMing for a bunch of characters playing dads. Yes, it is not it, the full title is Dungeons and Daddies colon not a BDSM podcast. <laughs> um, so if that's what you're into, sorry. Well, actually, no, we do do an episode where we do do BSA. So you know what? 
Listen to it no matter what. It's a great. It's great. You'll love it. It has it all. It has it. It has it all. BDSM and things that aren't BDSM. The two types of stories. <laughs> two buckets. And you guys are playing. You guys are playing fifth edition D and D, right? Yes, we are doing fifth edition. We are currently on our second season, following a bunch of teens trying to fix. Uh, the world after the ways that their parents screwed it up in season one. God, oh, that that's rolls. great. That's cool. Uh, I'll have to catch up to those. That's really, really rad. Um, but yeah, thank you for having me on. Of course. Of and course. If you want to check out your stuff online, what's your what's your internet, social handles, all that sort of thing? Uh, don't. There's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing for you on my socials. There's no, like... The first line of my profile on Twitter is please don't follow me because it's not all you're going to do. All you're doing when you follow me is making a date with yourself to later click the mute button. There's no reason for it. <laughs> I want to give a shout out if I didn't already say on the podcast. Your, your wrestling promo you did with uh, in a bathrobe uh, yeah. was pretty good. Thank you. Yeah. Pretty yeah. good. Me and Daddy Magic Matt Menard have what I would hope would be a uh, uh, an ongoing feud, but I know is almost certainly over now because I expended the effort to make a video and he has family and a full-time job. So that's not going to go anywhere. <laughs> Jokes on him. I say, keep digging in. Yeah. Oh yeah. Every mother is going to be like, Hey, guess what? Here's another thing I don't like about you. Dick. <laughs> Why won't Matt respond? The coward. <laughs> Any, anytime you want to start beef with us is cool. Like, Happily. If you wanna, yeah. 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 We're, we're, we're wrestling fans adjacent. So I think like, you know, we're down to try to get a, try to get a biff going. Um, Delightful. And, yeah, Anthony, thank you again for being part part of thank this. You. Uh, sorry, you had to read uh, a tragedy, but no, I loved it. Thank you. I think we all learned something. I think we all learned something about ourselves, our dads, and Rad Donner today. Before mm-hmm. uh, before we close it out, do you mind if I talk about my shit? Oh yeah, I figured we were gonna do our our rounds as well. Anthony's not the only one who gets to gets to plug. Yeah, Kevin, please go. Hi, uh, I'm Kevin Cole. Uh, I've been this voice. Um, uh, <laughs> it, you should uh, you should check out Space Kings at Space Kings Space. It's my tabletop RPG. Um, uh, it, it uses cards instead of dice playing cards. Ooh. It's uh, it's really fun. And if you want to hear it in action, you can go uh, you, you can go check out Pretend Friends. Uh, it's a it's a podcast I do with Paul and our friends Nick and Josh. Uh, I'm on and- it sometimes. And Chad's on it sometimes, and uh, it's really, really good. And uh, uh, yeah, if you if if you uh, think I'm uh, if you think I'm funny, and you think I would like to read uh, some of those words that he's been saying, uh, yeah, get get Space Kings at Space Kings that space, or you can get the physical book at book dot Space Kings that space. And uh, if if you like to play video games, you can play my video games at supertry.itch.io. I have a lot of video games. A lot of them are free. Some of them cost money. If you want to buy one, that'd be cool, too. They're all really good. I got to say, by the way, the heft of that, as someone who has a physical Space Kings book, it's real solid. Like, Jason mm. Bourne could kill at least 10 guys with it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's got it's got the hardcover and the full color, like, in this economy. Oh, like, some sharp edges. Oh. It's a hardy. It's a hardy book. Yeah. Uh, I if anything you want to check out because this is coming out probably yeah late October, early November. Uh, around this time, the new season of Star Trek Prodigy will be coming out on Paramount Plus. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, so please check that out if you're one of the few people that do have it. It might also come on Nickelodeon at some point in the future. I'm looking forward to it, man. I yeah. I really love the first uh, part of season one. So same. Oh, thank you. Hard thank same. you. Thank you. It's mm. we got to do some cool stuff. I have a uh, a holodeck episode I wrote that I am super nervous about Ooh. being received well. <laughs> <laughs> Please check it out. Beautiful, uh, Paul. I'm just trying to figure out if I'm the one that sounds like Mordecai from regular show. That's what I've been up. To. <laughs> yeah, we have we have a well, that's, that's Anthony. We have a listener that was asking which one of the people of us sounds like Mordecai from regular show. If you had to guess, oh, that's easy. Uh, none of you. They're wrong. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Here you go. Thank you. This this leads me to think it was Dom they were talking. It about. was our Dom. previous host. It had yeah. to be our Dom. previous host. Yeah, yeah it had yeah, to be yeah, Dom. So. Yeah, it was Craig Kilborn. <laughs> oh god what's craig kilborn up to now i don't know still not doing the daily show i assume uh signing old school posters i don't know <laughs> paul do you want to you want to throw out anything no nah, i think watch that's continue the, show yeah you can watch continue show if you want to watch that that's i've been doing that yeah, for 10 over 10 years uh you know it's it's still going we're still doing it i i watch it every week it's super funny cool what get get all those kaze no nata fans who love ballooning. Yo, play that game <laughs> that game is sick yeah man <laughs> Uh, Anthony, thank you once again. Yeah, thank you, Anthony. Thank you. You're, you're been a pleasure, and uh, we'll we'll see you all next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. Also, if you'd like to support us via Patreon, you can go to Patreon.com/slash/GooseBuds and gain access to our secret camp episodes where we just hang out and talk. Uh, you can also get access to polls to vote on new episodes. Uh, and choose what books we read. And also you can access our Discord where you can find a lot of cool people who will hang out, talk about 90s stuff, and also Elden Ring. We also have shirts, which you can find at goosebuds.store, where 
you can find our, our cool our cool cool stuff. Okay. Uh that's it. Sorry, we forgot to plug during the episode, so that's why I'm here. Alright, goodbye. This is Kevin. Goodbye. <laughs>
got little old moi pretty Frenched. Why? Yeah, but why were you French? <laughs> why, though? Dr. Chocula. Boney. Some of Chad's bird friends. Nicholas Maloney. Burgers Manic Pixie Autumn Boys. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. That's beautiful. Midwest Indigo 13. Moon Juice. Aaron Lord. Thomas Jansis. Eric Horwitz. Tiffany Lee. Dr. Egg Drop Soupman. Lucretia McEvil. Mutant Astronaut. Ooh. <laughs> SSJ Trogdor. Henry Torbert. Adam Knapp. Logan Derby. Brian Schmelzer. Mike Spaghetti Jones. Chick. Jesse Hammock. Milk Punk. Mr. Misfire. Mandy Nasty. Llama Lad. Skullatoran. Yaplin. Chris. Philip Reynolds. Danzig versus Sean Astin. The battle for Polly Shore's soul begins now. Don't try and unpack it, Chad. <laughs> okay. Leave okay. it. Leave it be. I'm just trying to figure out how all these parties overlap with each other, and I'm very curious. <laughs> what is the association? Please unpack it, actually, for us. Frodo. Why'd you go and have to take that the ring? <laughs> <laughs> That's the association. I got yeah. it. I'm in. I'm on. I'm on board. All right. Chicago Frank returns. Nate Bit G. Ooh, that's okay. That's how you, that's how you say that one. R.R. Davis Crafts Rye Animator. Scott Wable. Soggy Newspapers. Chris Kulik. Dakota Kemp. John W. Dr. Mr. Unimportant has moved on to Cyberpunk 2077. It's great now. Good to I've, hear. I've heard it's pretty good. I've cool. heard it's worth checking out. I want to watch that anime. <laughs> I do, t I do too. Rocco. <laughs> hey, Josh Howell's here. Hey, we can all agree on that, right? Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Liam Rogers. Evan Bowen. 976 Evil. Has anyone tried to call that yet? We should check that out. No, Chad. Oh, you can't call you're evil? Gonna call, you're going to call oh, evil. Okay. Oh, sorry. All right. Satan might answer. <laughs> Kiwi of Lerve. Fucking blowing my mind. Serial Killer X. Greg Musto. Benjamin Luther. Dennis Wright. Jover the Moon. Edgar's Crassus. Hi, first time, long time. Allie Rose. Sprinkle Buns. Only two of us monkeys have escaped the torture of Lord Kevin's grasp. <laughs> the rest are doomed to write more goosebumps, so called. Oh my god, they gotta <laughs> cut him off their message. Or, I mean, I, I can see kind of the poetic way of saying, like, it's a, it's a knock on the goosebumps, but they don't give you oh, goosebumps. Oh, I see, I see. So called wow. goosebumps. Kevin, why are you the monkey tamer? Like, why are you the, Cause, the guy? Because my, because of givekevinmoney.com was misconstrued as givekevinmonkeys.com. That's and then, right. Thank you. Thank you. Please <laughs> yeah. free to, we all remember the plot. We all remember <laughs> this. We're the all. Deep lore. <laughs> None of us have forgotten. So, uh, neither has Cameron Ganzaval build. Vosivi! Matt Septor. Craig Gervasi, aka Vitazen. Uh, Dakota Kipper. Hilda B. Kevin Cole's Cockatrice. I hope this is dick enough. <laughs> what is happening in this one of I finally get one? One for Kevin? Everyone has rebelled against Kevin in the Book of Names. The Book of Names is fighting against you. Well, I don't think... I mean, maybe that's good. Do, do folks like that? Is that a positive <laughs> thing for me to have? <laughs> I'm just happy to be included. Everyone's just stepping up to Camp Counselor Kevin and wanting to make an impression. <laughs> Anthony Rodriguez. B! D Rose Guy 863. Wow. Ooh. How did you read that? That was cyberpunk as fuck. There's a lot of leet in that. Jeffrey Webb is still a big baby, but we both sincerely appreciate your well wishes. Aww. I wish you well. Just Odin's eye hole. Jonathan McKinnon. Turaku, the thing that goes doink in the anime. Doink, doink. All he sets. Kate the Great. Mike Hart. Spencer Y. The secret provider. Cassandra Harris. Gulliver. James Stabernos. Gelato Coon. Chris no longer skips the banter. Byers. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah. Oh my god, it works perfectly. That last name was my favorite. Uh, so. Big Nick Lane. Kira and Brian are big fans. Thank you. G spooky Gafal, g themed g username, g version, <laughs> gov goblin grader, g from g Instagram. Love it. G excellent work. <laughs> Thank you. Blake, bad time having Kevin. Oh, Blake, I hope you have a better time next time. <laughs> it never stops. Quicksand Truther. Oh. Yeah. Dan Antonio. Greb Comics. Droman. 
George Props. We'd like to welcome, new to the book of names, Stinko the Clown. Join us, Taylene Jones. Welcome, the Puerto Rican Demon. I think this is you returning with a new name. Welcome back. Welcome, Kayla Norris. And finally, the last name etched in, Farah Tilde. (laughs) Welcome. Thank you all so very much. We love you. Thank you. Thank you.